Hello, my friends! We just got a new waifu! <laughs> I mean, a new hero. So I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about Novaria. I went through hell, aka the advanced server, with a huge ass ping for you to make this guide, so a like and sub would be appreciated. Especially when you enjoy ML guides, but also entertaining gameplays. First, the skills. Passive. When Novaria summons her black ball called Astral Spheres with her first or second skill, it will continue continuously slow nearby enemies by 20%. When her big black ball explodes, it deals magic damage, plus 4 to 6% of the enemy's max HP, which is depending on the skill level. So the damage is generally higher against high HP tanks than against squishy MMs. The damage is still not very high against tanks though, so don't expect that you will get a tank killer. LOL. Whenever her balls hits an enemy, they will also be revealed, which means she is a perfect hero to check sus bushes. First skill, Novaria summons her black ball at a targeted location, continuously dealing magic damage to enemies in the circle area. After 2 seconds, the ball will explode, which triggers the passive explosion damage, but also increases the slow effect of her big ball by 2.5 times. So 50% instead of 20%, I'm a math genius, I know. Okay. This skill is basically your wave clear skill, as it's super effective against enemies who are not running away. It is also very useful against walking heroes, as they can't escape it that easily. It's more or less useless against dash heroes though, unless an ally stunned them. It is useful though to cut off the enemy's escape route, so whenever you see someone running away into a small corridor, you can use this skill to end their misery. Second skill, Novaria summons her black ball as a distance and draws it towards her. Enemies that get hit by it will receive no damage, but the slow and reveal effect of the passive will be applied to them. Once it reaches her, she has 5 seconds to slap her big ball into the enemy's face, which will make the ball explode and it will deal the passive damage. Minions and jungle creeps won't make the ball explode, so you can't hide behind Ricky if Novaria is aiming at you. The further you're away from the enemy, the harder the ball will slap their face. Or, in the official term, your damage will be increased based on the travel distance from your ball. Your camera will also zoom out and gives you almost a heck view over the battlefield. It is made so you can aim your ball better, but having so much vision is generally very useful to see what's going on on the battlefield. She also gains 20% movement speed for the duration of the skill and can pass through any terrain which is one of her biggest strengths. This means you can for example hide outside of the battlefield or even escape Yin's ultimate easily. When you pass through a wall, you will also increase your movement speed by 60%, which makes you fast as fuck boy. Now jokes aside, this is her main damage source, and the damage is pretty high if you manage to hit an enemy from a far distance. You need some pretty good aim and prediction skills to really make use of that extra damage though, which is why she's not the easiest hero to play. You can also hit multiple enemies with it if they violate the non-existing social distancing rules. Anyone remember these? Now this skill has many ways to become useful for you. When you simply want to damage your enemies, you can either use it to get some distance between you and your enemy and shoot your ball into their face from a far distance. Or if you need a quick fire skill, you can summon it and move directly towards it and shoot your ball as soon as it reaches you. You can also use this skill as a simple escape skill, as you can slow your enemies while gaining a huge movement speed bonus and pass through walls or even outside of the battlefield to escape any enemy. Plus you can slap your ball into their face once you're safe to remind them that chasing is often the wrong decision. It is also very useful to check bushes. Whenever you locate a sus bush, just use it to blast your big ball into it and see if any enemy was happily accepting your gift. Ultimate. Novaria scatters an astral echo in the targeted direction, briefly slowing enemy heroes by 50% while applying an astral ring on them. It increases the hitbox by 2.5 times and reveals the surrounding area. This effect lasts for 8 seconds. Why Novaria is no support mage is beyond me, because this is one of the most OP support skills I've ever seen. The increased hitbox is a wet dream for any hero that needs to aim their skills, like Granger, Selina, Harley, Dyroth, Beatrix and so on. 
The reveal skill is also OP, as you can for example secure the whole Lord area while taking it. LOL. And since the effect reveals the enemy surrounding area, it will also reveal their allies if they get close to them. It's basically a legal map hack for a certain area. Yes, it deals no damage, which is a bit weird for an ultimate, but with these effects it makes her one of the strongest support heroes in the game. Which will be a perfect transition to how should you play Novaria, but we need to talk first about her build as it's very important for her playstyle. Generally there are three possible builds for her. A full burst build, a cooldown reduction support build and a cooldown reduction burst build. For the full burst build you use the typical burst item like cock Clock of Destiny? <laughs> oh god. Clock of Destiny? Lightning Trunction and Holy Crystal for the maximum amount of magic power and item passive damage. The thing is, I don't think that this is the best build for her, although Moonton recommends it, as the total magic power bonus her skills get is only 50%. So if you have 500 magic power, your skill damage will be only increased by 250 magic damage, which is quite underwhelming. That's why I would rather recommend the cooldown reduction builds. So you can spam around your skills every 4 to 5 seconds. The support build is better when you have tanky enemies and should include enchanted talisman, fleeting time and either magic shoes or the maxed out mage emblem with extra CD reduction. So you can reach the max amount of cooldown reduction which is 45%. As extra items you should use ice queen wand to further increase your slow effect, genius wand to reduce the enemy's magic defense, glowing wand for some nice burn effect. Divine Glaive if the enemy build magic defense items and as last item Blood Wings to have some extra magic power plus a shield that saves your butt in the late game. The cooldown reduction burst build is better against many squishy enemies and should include enchanted talisman again but also the burst item clock of destiny and lightning junction which by the way has a 10% cooldown reduction effect. So to reach the 45% CD reduction you only need 15% more. This you can achieve with magic shoes and your mage emblem or when you build fleeting time which I will do. Then you can replace the magic shoes with arcane boots for some magic penetration or with rapid boots to become a formula 1 car. Other items that you can include in this build are divine glaive, glowing wand, holy crystal or blood wings. Winter junction and immortality are also nice items that you can include as last item in any build as they let you survive bad situations in the late game where you are not allowed to die. As emblem you should use the mage emblem of course with the talent impure rage for some extra damage and mana regen or mystery shop to get your items quicker which I personally like more. As spell you should either use sprint as it perfectly works together with your second skill, flicker if you want to reposition yourself immediately for example against dashing enemies or flame shot to shoot two ranged skills into the enemy's face or to push enemies away that try to hack you to death. Now to her playstyle and combos. Generally she can perform well in any rule except for the jungle rule. On the mid lane she can clear the wave quickly and rotate fast thanks to her second skill as Roma she can easily open up the map for her allies and non-stop poke the enemies with her second skill. She can basically join the Kadita Selena club. Huh? And in case you need to adjust because one of your airheaded allies chose a second mage, you can also just go to the XP or gold lane as Novaria is pretty good there as well. You can just sit in the bush and fire your ball into the other bushes and poke your enemies so many times that they are forced to retreat and miss their wave. But for now let's discuss how to play her in her main role, the mid lane. Her play style in general is pretty similar to Selena, which means being annoying <laughs> AF with your long range skills while opening up the map for your allies. The only difference is that Novaria can clear waves quickly but have no stuns to annoy the enemy. In the early game you should of course make sure to clear your wave and rotate together with your Roma and jungler to one of the side lanes. On the way there you can provide vision just in case any enemy is planning an ambush. Once you arrive there you can use your early game combo. Try to block the way of your enemy enemies by placing your first skill between them and their turret, use your second skill to slow the enemy further and to get some distance to them and blast your ball into their face while they hide under the turret with 15% of their HP. She will definitely become a nightmare for squishy marksmen as they have no place to hide from a second skill poke. When it comes to the turtle fight, try to provide vision with your skills especially your ult as you can reveal the whole turtle area when you stand here. You can also try to steal the enemy's buff with your second skill as the explosion damage will hit the buff when you hit the enemy's jungler. When it comes to ganks, make sure to stay as far away from the enemy as possible. Her biggest weakness by far is a close range allergy. You are just food for assassins like Saber and Amen. As you can 
can't escape their skills once they got close to you. In the mid game you should provide as much vision as possible for your team before a team fight starts. So your allies can make a smart decision if they should engage or not. I know some allies just mindlessly jump into a 1v5 but that's another story. Keep poking the enemy squishies and be as annoying as you can. The enemy's marksman and jungler must hate your guts. Because if not, you haven't done a good job until now. In team fights your combo is depending on the current situation. If you force an objective like a turret, you should use your ult first to reveal the area around it. If there are enemies, you can use your second skill to poke them away. If there's already a team fight going on though, use your second skill first and then your ult to slow the enemies and increase their hitbox. Then blast your ball into their face and give them a nice dose of your first skill as well if it's safe. If you want to spam all your skills around to kill an enemy, you can use your first skill first to slow them and deal some damage, use your second skill and ult to further slow them while you get some distance to them and blast your ball into their face to finish them off. Or you just check the map for low HP enemies, go there and use your second skill out of nowhere. BOOM! In the late game your support skills will shine the most, as the revealing ult can prevent a devastating ambush from the enemy or secure the lord area which is so important in a close game. So unlike this one, if you ever lost a game because the enemy stole the lord, you know what I mean. No matter which build you use, you deal an insane amount of damage to the enemy squishies. So make sure to target them instead of the enemy's tanks. Two to three shots with your second skill is already enough to kill a squishy enemy, but even making them retreat before a big team fight starts is often enough. Just remember to stay in the backline so you're not becoming a target for the enemy. Now to our counters. Dash heroes are a big problem for you, as it's super hard to aim your ball when there's a dashing red dancing around on the battlefield. This includes heroes like Ling, Fanny, Joy or One One. Heroes who can close the distance so you are also a big problem, as you have no dash for yourself to quickly get to safety. Examples are Hayabusa, Gushin, Lancelot, One One, Benedetta or Instant burst heroes are obviously a problem as well, as you're a squishy mage. Getting ambushed by heroes like Eudora, Saber, Aurora, Kadita or Harley means you will die for sure. Tanky enemies also counter you somewhat, as your damage is not high enough to scare them away. But as long as you aim for the squishy enemies, they won't be a big problem for you. Now if you're not 100% sure about how the mage items work, you should check out my guide where I explain in detail how every mage item works. Genius right? Sure. Oh, mother!